In today's story, we'll read some excerpts derived from the pages of The Elder Scrolls Tales of Tamriel, Book 1, The Land. We'll begin with history and the happenings before the Ages of Man, with emphasis on the Dawn Era and the Marethic Era. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the lore and tales from The Elder Scrolls. Before the Ages of Man, The Dawn Era by Ankatar of Shimmerine. Before man came to rule Tamriel, and before the chronicles of the historians recorded the affairs of the rulers of Tamriel, the events of our world are known only through myths and legends, and through the divinely inspired teachings of the Eight Divines. For convenience, historians divide the distant ages of prehistory into two broad periods of time, the Dawn Era and the Marethic Era. The Dawn Era The Dawn Era is that period before the beginning of mortal time when the feats of the gods take place. The Dawn Era ends with the exodus of the gods and magic from the world at the founding of the Adamantine Tower. The term Marethic comes from the Nords, literally Era of the Elves. The Marethic Era is the prehistoric time after the exodus of the gods and magic from the world at the founding of the Adamantine Tower, and before the arrival of Ysgrimor the Nord in Tamriel. The following are the most notable events of the Dawn Era, presented roughly in sequence as it must be understood by creatures of time such as ourselves. The cosmos formed from the Orbis, Chaos or Totality, by Anu and Padme. Akatosh, Oriel, formed and time began. The gods, Etada, formed. Lorcan convinced or tricked the gods into creating the mortal plane, Nern. The mortal plane was at this point highly magical and dangerous. As the gods walked, the physical makeup of the mortal plane and even the timeless continuity of existence itself became unstable. When magic, Magnus, architect of the plans for the mortal world, decided to terminate the project, the gods convened at the Adamantine Tower, Dereni Tower, the oldest known structure in Tamriel, and decided what to do. Most left when magic did, Others sacrificed themselves into other forms so that they might stay, such as the Elnofi. Lorcan was condemned by the gods to exile in the mortal realms, and his heart was torn out and cast from the tower. Where it landed, a volcano formed. With magic, in the mythic sense, gone, the cosmos stabilized. Elven history, finally linear, began. Marethic Era, year 2500. Before the Ages of Man, the Marethic Era, by Ankantar of Shimmerine. The Marethic Era was figured by early Nord scholars as a series of years numbered in reverse order backward from their beginning of time, the founding of the Cameron Dynasty, recorded as Year Zero of the First Era. The prehistoric events of the Marethic Era are listed here with their traditional Nord Marethic dates. The earliest Marethic date cited by King Harold scholars was Marethic Era Year 2500 the Nord Reckoning of the First Year of Time. As such, the Marethic Era extends from Marethic Era, year 2500 in the distant past, to Marethic Era, year 1, the year before the founding of the Cameron Dynasty and the establishment of the White Gold Tower as an independent city-state. According to King Harold's Bards, Marethic Era, year 2500, was the date of construction of the Adamantine Tower on Balfira Island in High Rock the oldest known structure of Tamriel. This corresponds roughly to the earliest historical dates given in various unpublished elven chronicles. During the early Marethic era, the aboriginal beast peoples of Tamriel, the ancestors of the Khajiit, Argonians, Orcs, and other beast folk, lived in preliterate communities throughout Tamriel. In the middle Marethic era, the Altmeri refugees, mortals of elven origin, left their doomed, now lost continent of Altmeris, also known as Old Elnofi, and settled in southwestern Tamriel. The first colonies were distributed at wide intervals on islands along the entire coast of Tamriel. Later inland settlements were founded primarily in fertile lowlands in southwest and central Tamriel. Wherever the beast folk encountered the elves, the sophisticated, literate, technologically advanced Altmeri cultures displaced the primitive beast folk into the jungles, marshes, mountains, and wastelands. The Adamantine Tower was rediscovered and captured by the Dereni, a prominent and powerful Aldmeri clan. 
They built Crystal Tower on Somerset Isle, and later, the White Gold Tower in Cyrodiil. During the Middle Marethic Era, Altmeri explorers mapped the coasts of Vardenfell, building the first era High Elven Wizard Towers at Aldredania, Balfell, Tel Arun, and Tel Mora in Morrowind. It was also during this period that Aeliad, Wild Elven, settlements flourished in the heartlands surrounding White Gold Tower in present-day Cyrodiil. Wild Elves, also known as the Heartland High Elves, preserved the Dawn Era magics and language of the Elnofi, ostensibly a tributary to the High King of Alinor, the Heartland's long lines of communication from the Somerset Isles' sovereignty effectively isolated Cyrodiil from the High Kings at Crystal Tower. The late Middle Marethic Era is the period of the High Velothi culture. The Chimer, ancestors of the modern Dunmer, or Dark Elves, were dynamic, ambitious, long-lived elven clans devoted to fundamentalist ancestor worship. The Chimer clans followed the prophet Veloth out of the ancestral elven homelands in the southwest to settle in the lands now known as Morrowind. Despising the secular culture and profane practices of the Dwemer, the Chimer also coveted the lands and resources of the Dwemer, and for centuries provoked them with minor raids and territorial disputes. The Dwemer, dwarves, free-thinking, reclusive elven clans devoted to the secrets of science, engineering, and alchemy established underground cities and communities in the mountain range, later the Velothi Mountains, separating modern Skyrim and Morrowind. The late Marethic era marks the precipitous decline of Velothi culture. Some Velothi settled in villages near declining and abandoned ancient Velothi towers. During this period, Velothi high culture disappeared on Vardenfell Island. The earliest Dwemer freehold colonies date from this period. Degenerate Velothi devolved into tribal cultures which, in time, either evolved into the modern great houses of Morrowind or persisted as the barbarian Ashlander tribes. The only surviving traces of this tribal culture are scattered Velothi towers and Ashlander nomads on Vardenfell Island. The original First Era High Elven Wizard Towers along the coasts of Tamriel were also abandoned around this time. In the late Marethic Era, pre-literate humans, the so-called Nedic peoples, migrated from the continent of Atmora, also Altmora, or the Elderwood in Aldmeris, and settled in northern Tamriel. The Nord culture hero, Ysgrimor, leader of a great colonizing fleet to Tamriel, is credited with developing a runic transcription of Nord speech based on Elvish principles, and so Ysgrimor is considered the first human historian. Ysgrimor's fleet landed at Hasarik Head at the extreme northern tip of Skyrim's Broken Cape. The Nords built the legendary city of Sarthal there. The elves drove the men away during the Night of Tears, but Ysgrimor soon returned with his 500 companions. Also during the late Marethic era, a legendary immortal hero, warrior, sorcerer, and king, variously known as Palinna Whitestrake, Harold Harrybreeks, Ismir, and Hans the Fox, wandered Tamriel. He gathered armies, conquered lands, ruled them, and then abandoned his kingdom so he could wander again. Thus ends the brief description of the Dawn Era and the Marethic Era. Quite obviously, every event including the gods, the elves, men, and Tamriel was shortened to fit in the book's brief blurb on the prehistoric ages. Perhaps some of the events and peoples discussed today, such as the Night of Tears, Pelena Whitestrake, and the Aeliads, might be great conversation topics of their own to dive a little deeper into. But until next time, keep on adventuring.